like America. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. What's up? What's up, buddy? Wake up. Open your eyes. Oh, open. There, there you go. There you go. Welcome to the alchemical mindset. Welcome to the alchemical mindset. You're finally waking up. You're finally starting to wake up, Black America. After you watch a president incite insurrection, sedition, to the in, at the uh, state capitol building, you're waking up. You're recognizing that if that was a group of black people or a black president, that he would be removed by the 25th Amendment very quickly. Amendment, sorry. Very quickly. And we're realizing that, yes, black people would have been shot, would have been killed, would have never been able to penetrate the Speaker of the House's office. You're finally, finally beginning to wake up, beginning to realize that you are not an American citizen. You are one by paper, but by paper alone. That morally, that actively, you are not an American citizen. Although we have fought, died, and bled, our ancestors came here by slave ships or those who are already here, you recognize that this is the land of the free and the brave, those who are brave enough to come and take what they want. You're here and you recognize that. You're starting to see it, and I'm glad that you are. Because now maybe you can start to recognize what are the solutions that we must take. You see, Dr. King said that he believed that his American dream has become his nightmare. He said that because he knew that integration could possibly cause us to lose ourselves, could cause us to take the pressure off of America into making us a bona fide citizen. You see, as bona fide citizens, when a cop shoots a black man unarmed or chokes out a black man or kneels on a black man's neck and we watch him die, those police officers are immediately prosecuted. As a matter of fact, those things would not even happen as often as they do. That black people can protest and the National Guard would not be called out, but yet white people do and it's, they're not called out. If we were bona fide American citizens, those things would be totally different, that we would have had an opportunity just as much as anybody else have had in this country. You see, when Europeans came to America, they were given manifest destiny where they said, here's land. You need to build your family by having property. You need to build your family by taking from the Freedmen Bank and giving you finances in order to get yourself started. But no, not you, not you. You see, we came here as slaves. We spent 400 years in slavery. And just like any other slave, we were looked upon as tools. Now, if you think about a tool, a tool is to be used for the purpose of building, construction, of helping those who command the tool. But once it's done, the tool is discarded. The tool has no need. The tool is not kept inside where the building was constructed. The tool is not given an opportunity to go build his own land, his own houses. No, the tool is just discarded to be pulled out whenever it's necessary, whenever it's needed. Much like politicians pull you out whenever they need your vote. You're a tool. And when, in order to make you a tool, you had to be dehumanized. You had to be cut down to a level where you're base animals. This is why your name is not your name. This is why your religion is not your religion. This is why your allegiance is not your allegiance. This land is not your land. This is why this culture is not your culture because you had to be stripped down to a base beast of burden so that those who are decent in their mind can justify the treatment of black people. And that mentality still persists today. We see it evidently in how a president commits sedition, but yet still sits in office. How people go in and they breached the chamber of the Senate, sat in the chairs, took selfies, but yet only about 50 were arrested. One person died, one person was shot, another person was shot. I want to feel more grievance for those people, but I can't. I can't. One person does not equal to the many, the hundreds 
that we experience consistently and annually for doing less, for having a pack of cigarettes and selling them, for selling water, for wearing a hoodie. Mm -hmm. We did not commit federal crimes, but yet we were murdered. Black people recognize you have been dehumanized. And since that has been passed down from generation to generation, you are not a citizen of this country. We let the gas off is what Dr. King talked about. 11 months before he was assassinated, he said that it cost America absolutely nothing to allow you to vote, but yet you have been hooked with bamboos, led astray, run amok into believing that your vote humanizes you and makes you a bona fide citizen of this country. That you will now lean back and take it easy because you have control of the democratic control of the Senate and Congress and the president off in the office of the presidency. But yet America knows that in a city as chocolate as Atlanta that has run the political environment of Atlanta for 50 years, they know and recognize the numbers and the numbers say that out of the six the lowest 16 percent of the population in atlanta financial 16 percent of the population in atlanta it is represented by 90 percent black people 90 percent 90 percent of the 16 percent are black people in atlanta yet we control the government right we control the police right we control the fire department right we control most public services right we control all these things, but yet we don't own the land, we don't own the finances, and we don't own the businesses. Have we really progressed? It cost them nothing to allow you to vote. He also said that it cost them nothing to allow you to integrate into their schools and their lunch counters. But it actually profited them to allow you into their schools and their lunch counters. Allowing you into their schools, the school I graduated from, Marietta High School, if you look at their records as far as football and sports prior to integration, they didn't win many state championships. But as soon as Lemon Street High School integrated into Marietta High School, which they did before the Civil Rights Bill, they won championship after championship after championship because them, them black boys can run that ball. It benefited them. Gave their school more clout. Their lunch counters started making more money. Their shopping, their stores started making more money. Their grocery stores that you previously couldn't go into started making more money. While the black businesses in your community started to make less money. And less money. And less money. The housing in our community started becoming more dilapidated because we had to go run and live next to the white man. Instead of us recognizing how to build our own communities and maintain, let me not say recognize how to build, but to maintain the building of our own communities. But integration made us think that it is better over there. I'm going to prove you wrong, white man, by making you take my money, all the while bankrupting the black community itself. It became a nightmare for black America, but it became the profit of white America. It cost them nothing. Now, in order for America to actually do something to... Uh, bring black people up to the proper level, they will have to repeat what they did for white immigrants and Asian immigrants when they came to America. You see, they will tell a black person, pull yourself up by your bootstrap, but you're talking to a bootless man. A bootless man cannot pull himself up by his bootstraps. But see, when white immigrants came, they said, let's take the land. See, it's the home of the free and land. It's the the home of the brave and the land of the free, however that little saying goes. But it is for those who are brave enough to take the land. You see, natives were looking at, looked upon as savages. They weren't Christian, so they were savages. So we can take their land. Manifest destiny. And in that manifest destiny, they said, go west, young man. Hey, you Irish immigrants, you Italian immigrants, you German immigrants. All of you immigrants from Europe, go west and take that land 
from the red man. Go take it. Build your family with real estate. Build your family by owning property. And when they did this, they built their families, they built their wealth, they built their structure because they were humans. Now when black people follow suit, no, you built a nice thing here. Let's burn it down. Let's bomb it. Oh, you built a nice thing here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Let's bomb that too. You built some good stuff down, you know, here in Brunswick, Georgia. Let's burn that down. Let's burn down Tulsa and massacre your people. Now, when the Japanese were put in internment camps and they were released, the American government gave them money and gave them land. But when the people of Tulsa were massacred and burned down, the American government gave them nothing, absolutely nothing, because you're not a bona fide citizen of America. You're not. I'm glad you're waking up to it. Because maybe in your awakened state, you will come to realize that the only people who are going to support you is you. The American government, through your vote, is never going to equalize you and make you citizens of America. They're never going to come and give you reparations. They're not going to provide land for you. They're not going to provide those opportunities. What, give you some educational opportunities? You have those. What benefit does an educational opportunity have for you if as soon as you walk up into the interview, they look at your black face and say, Nit, nope, nine, it's not going to happen. What does it benefit you that when you walk into the bank with the same business plan and better credit as the other person, that they give them the loan, but they won't give it to you? It is just the Freedman Bank all over again. You give all your money to Bank of America, and you even give all your money to black banks who have more stringent requirements than the white banks. But they tell you no over and over again. It's just like the Freedman Bank. When black former slaves gave their money to the Freedman Bank, but yet that bank gave the money to the white former slave owners and factory builders. The only way you free yourself is to open up your own mind and open up your own wallet, to open up your own concepts and do your own thing. America is not yours. And we only represent about 30% of the population, if that. If that, probably less. And the fact of the matter is, we don't have the firepower to take this country. It's not going to happen. The only option we have is to build our own neighborhoods, communities, support our own businesses. But we're not going to do that unless our religious leaders take a stand. You see, those leaders in the 1960s, they all got jobs. They all took political office. They took the pressure off because it would they knew that when Dr. King started talking about the billions of dollars it would take to lift black people to an equal standing so that black people are humanized and have the opportunity the same opportunity as white Americans they knew that they would get killed shot murdered it wouldn't happen so what's the solution now what do we do now in 2021 what do we do because evidently they've shown you that they don't really care about us there's a few things. I've said this many times before, and I would love it if the black religious communities would take hold of it. But I recognize that it's just something I'm going to have to do with myself. Uh, but if a black religious organization did do this, hey, pastors, you're not going to lose your tithe money. I know selling hope has made you plenty of money. Selling hope to the downtrodden, to those who just say, keep paying your tithes and giving your tithes and God's going to bless you. God's going to give you something. God's going to send that check in the mail. Just keep giving your tithes. I know you can't pay your rent, but keep giving that tithe. I know you can't feed your kids, but keep giving that tithe. I know that that's been the message, and I know that message has worked for a very long time, but I guarantee you if you do this, you will actually have more money in your tithe offerings than you've ever had before because what you will be creating is business owners who have more money and more parishioners who have jobs and better jobs in your church. Just follow this in your mosque, in your synagogue. Just do this. Simple thing. Every week, as often as you ask for those tithes, 
tell the people to support the businesses in their congregation, in your congregation. Have a business directory, more than a bit, but my, and many of you have a business directory. I know you're going to say, oh, well, my church. No, your church really don't because if your church did this, what I'm talking about, then your church will be a mega church and many other churches will follow suit. That's the thing. Everybody will copy you if you did this. But you have that business directory. You promote it every week. Not once a year, not twice a year. Every week. Every week. Buy from the businesses in your congregation. Business owners, hire the people in your congregation. Business owners, Teach classes on how to start and build a proper business in your congregation, to your congregation. Church, start a what's called a family bank in your church. Let me explain how that works. You can also do this within your individual family as I am doing with mine. It's a little bit differently than, different than the Rothschild started theirs because Mayor Rothschild started with millions of dollars in order to do it. But basically, basically, take this. Tell a person that if they pay a certain amount of money, make it simple, $100 a month, a month, for three years, they will become a member of the family bank or the church bank. Right? This money goes into the church bank for three years for all the people who are participating. Take that money and the church start a for-profit division of the church and go out and buy property. Every year buy property, whether it's tax lien properties or commercial properties, buy properties. Own the properties. Rake in money from those properties. Houses, um, commercial, all of it. After a person, and as a person continues to pay after three years, if they need a car loan, a house loan, if they need a loan for anything, they come to the church, borrow the money. The church gives them the money at prime. We don't care about your credit credit rating because you've been faithful in these years. Oh, and by the way, during these three years, there's a certain amount of classes that they take on finances and credit and that sort of thing. And they will then be able to borrow the money that they need to buy a car, a house, go to go to college from the church, paying it back at prime rates to the church, the for-profit entity of the church, paying this money back, okay? Now, that makes the church a lot of money. That makes the persons a lot of money. That allows the person to borrow from the church. Now, also, everyone who's participating in this, allow them every quarter, the profits that come from all the investments of the church, 30% of it is paid to those people, dispersed to the people involved. You will make so much money as a church. The for-profit side of the church will make money. The non-profit side of the church will make money. Why? Because other than that 30%, all profit is donated back to the church so that it's not, so that the for-profit gets a tax deduction and the church is not paying taxes anyway. In this way, the church is making money. The parishioners are making money. You're building businesses in your community. You are owning the property in your community you're educating the people in the community and as word gets out people will come to your church simply for that simply for that reason you can do this in your family as well you can set this up as a family bank for just your family if you go on youtube and research family bank you're going to see stuff about life insurance that's not a freaking family bank life insurance is not an investment you don't borrow money against your life insurance that's bull that's bull. That's a scam. Don't do it. Do not do that. Susus are not investments. Stop doing damn susus. They're not investments. And please stop contacting me about doing a damn susu. I'm not doing one. It's not an investment. All right. This is how you build generational generational wealth. Now, if a person stops paying, oh yeah, my bad. Left part out. If for every person who becomes a member of this, you put a life insurance policy out on that person. A life insurance policy on that person, preferably from someone in your church who's a life who has who does life insurance. But you put a life insurance policy on that person so that they ever default on the loans that they have out, then the church will eventually get their money back when the person passes away. And even if the person never defaults on it, you know members of your church pass away with, within every five six years. So if you got 
$100,000, million, $250,000, $500,000 policies on your members, then the bank, the, the bank of the church increases, which allows you to loan out even more money to your church. Imagine if your church, mosque or synagogue, I keep using church, but mosque, synagogue, doesn't matter, or your family, if every house is mortgaged through your organization, through your church. Every car is mortgaged. Every college education is mortgaged through your church. That all that interest is coming back to your church. That you own properties all around your community and the rents are coming back to your church. The businesses that are in those businesses, those, those uh, commercial properties, are coming, are, are owned by people in your church. Your church is supporting those businesses you're going to become the model of how to build black communities and then connect with the Caribbean and connect with Africa. Connect with your roots, man. Your roots are in America. I know many of you are watching this and you're gonna say, well, my family's been here, my family's, I got Indian in my family. Even if you claim that, Native Americans originally at some point, 65,000 years ago, came from Africa, okay? Just, let me just, actually 125, 125,000 years ago, they migrated from East Africa to Asia, and then from 65,000 years uh, ago, they came from Asia to the Americas. So, guess what? You're still African, all right? Get over it. <laughs> but even if you don't, go to a um, Native American reservation. See if they let you in. See if they let you have a piece of that pie. If the answer is no, get off that stick. Get off that stick. It's not benefiting you. But let's do this. This is how we solve the issue. This is how we change the landscape. We become self-sufficient where we don't need their permission to be human. We don't need their permission to be a citizen. Because when you control your neighborhoods and you control your finances, then those who are in power must listen to you. They have to listen to you. You don't need to be violent. Your money will do the violent work for you. Your money will control their attitudes toward you because the police department will adhere to those who own the money and the land in their community. Police department gets out of line. We have the power to get you out, to get you fired, to make you homeless, police officer. Police chief, we can get you voted out so quickly. Superintendent, you're not teaching what we want our kids to learn? You're gone too. We can get rid of all of you and force you to recognize, and this is what Dr. King said, that we did not apply the pressure to force America to treat us like humans. But we can. We can. It's a simple plan. Yeah, it's a lot of working parts, and it takes a dedicated people to do it. But if you're the pastor of a church, the imam of a mosque, or you're the priest at a synagogue, guess what? You have the power to get it done. You have the power to get it done. Now, as far as myself, I'm not a member of any of those things, but I will start a couple of things. I will create an organization this year that will do that. I've already begun this process with my family, as far as the family bank, and I will create an investment group that will allow for groups of nine to start family banks, because I know what most of you are saying. I don't have nine people in my family. I don't have seven in people, seven people in my family who is dedicated and willing to do this. I don't even have five people in my family who is dedicated and willing to do this. But there may be five to nine other people who are dedicated and willing to do this. And the way that I'm going to set this up, your family will always be a board member and have the ability to build generational wealth. So um, let's keep talking about this. Let's have at this. I appreciate you guys being here. Please subscribe to the channel. Become a member of the channel. We have our full moon chats. And hey, in this time, this is the time for us to wake up and recognize that if you want to be treated as a citizen, you got to demand it. You have to do demand it. You can't vote it in. You can't beg it in. You can't plead for it in. You have to demand it. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.